Whether it's to build a passive income or to escape the nine to five rat race, more and more people across the UK are turning to property investing and development as a way of making money work for them, not for them working for money. It sounds easy, but property is not a game for the faint-hearted, with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds at stake. The rewards can be great, but if it goes wrong, it can go very, very wrong. You often need financial experience and knowledge to take that deal over the line. And that's where we come in. In this series, we give budding property developers the chance to pitch their deals to our five seasoned property professionals. John Howard, Helen Chorley, Paul Mahoney, Nicholas Woolwork and Ranjan Bhattacharya, or who we call our property investment angels. Our contestants are in with the chance to walk away with the backing of someone who will bring both finance and experience to the deal. Will our angels be sending them up to the penthouse or will they be heading straight for the basement? I'm Elizabeth Warburton and you're watching Property Elevator. Welcome back to series two of Property Elevator. There's been millions of pounds worth of deals happened over the last few days with some very happy property investors. I can't wait to see what's in store for today. Just a little bit of feedback when presenting to investors. You're better off being conservative with numbers. You need me to put up 700 grand, yeah? So I guess my concern is, is more kind of the, the environment and the economic environment that we're in at the moment. If it was two straight floors and a loft, then you could do, have a lot of fun. Like you as a developer, I want to go in and create something and create that value and I get a buzz out of that. Hi Dylan, welcome to the show. Hi Lizzie, thanks for having me. How are you doing? Yeah, very good, thank you. Feeling excited? Yeah, excited and a bit nervous. Good, don't be nervous. Mm. It's fine. Okay. They're all really <laughs> lovely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell yeah. us a little bit about the deal. It's a commercial property that might be converted into residential. Great. Yeah. And how much investment are you looking for today? I'm lo hoping for 330,000. In exchange of? Uh, so 40% equity. Okay, great. Yeah. Very, so. nice. Very nice. We're now off to Milton Keynes and Dylan is bringing this deal to us. I think it's a nurse, uh, nursery at the moment and he's looking to convert it potentially into yet another HMO or I think uh, splitting into houses, which would be quite interesting. Let's get him in. Dylan, thank you very much for coming in today. Tell us a bit about yourself and your, and your background and then um, about the deal you wish us to fund, please. My background is, I arrived five years ago in the country from South Africa, as I'm sure you can tell, uh, not Australian. But uh, so I arrived with 550 pounds in my pocket and uh, got on a train. I'd been an economics teacher in South Africa and I uh, arrived here and didn't have any jobs or you know, accommodation sorted and went around trying to find a room to live in and no one wanted to rent to me because I just arrived in the country, didn't have credit history, didn't have any wages, but I managed to find a room eventually by walking into an estate agency after the second day thinking I'd end up on the street and there's a South African there and I said to him, can I rent a room? He gave me a room and I said, how did you do what you did with property? And he told me, and I said to him, I'll work a day a week for free. What I want to know is what you know, I don't need money from you. And so he allowed me to do that. And it turned out he ran the Northampton property meet. He told me to do 20,000 leaflets, and I did 22,000 leaflets, and I got a lease option deal. And that was my first deal about three years ago. And from there, I've worked on you know, uh, joint ventures, raising private finance. I've managed to build it up to a 2.4 million pound portfolio. With this property deal, it's a property in Milton Keynes where I'm currently living and I've managed to, so it's on for 500,000 we can secure it for. The cash that's needed is 250,000 pounds. The plan is to convert it into a 10 bed HMO. Uh, the cash flow of that uh, should be about 3,000 pounds net profit per month. There's planning uh, permission that's lapsed. So the plan is to try and get planning for it and there's three options in the second stage. So the first stage will be refinancing at six months as a 10 bed HMO and that will leave 180,000 pounds in the deal. Within 18 months, apply for the planning permission from day one 
and build either an extension, so get six bedrooms more, which will push cash flow up to 4,700 per month, or else uh, to build a house and sell that, and, and that would get, you know, release all the c initial cash flow, uh, cash back to you as an investor, so you have no money left in the deal. Cash flow would be a bit less, obviously, that compared to holding it, but you would have all your cash out. Um, and the third option would be to convert into four flats, um, and that would actually release an extra £70,000 on top of your money coming out. So we'd have £70,000, and I'd propose that we reinvest that and you know, source another deal and refinance that money into a new deal. So first of all, your story is incredibly humbling, uh, and uh, well done you, fantastic. Ditto what John said there, really incredible story, well done, and it just shows that if you apply yourself, you know, success can be taught. You can learn from other people, having good mentors is important, and, and doing hard work to understand how to do these things yeah. mm. is critical. Uh, I'd say one of my main expertise is, is commercial to residential conversions and specifically micro studios and HMO. So it's this not is, the only one, but this like is a nice, uh, a nice <laughs> unit, I like it. You know, I'm interested, uh, really on your market valuation initially, your stage one refinancing. Yeah. Um, what is that a refinance of? Stage one would be refinancing as, so getting a commercial valuation so as okay. a 10-bed HMO. And, and what is it now? Currently it's been used as a doctor's surgery. Doctor's, so it's D, yeah. D1? Yep, but it was residential before, got converted into a doctor's surgery and now we're going back. Okay, and the lapsed planning is for a single C3 house? That's correct, yeah. So. As you can see on that picture, it, the planning was for it to come out. I mean, the, the options we have is to go the other way. So the planning was for physical building works and conversion to a large C3 single dwelling house? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so, and you would like to put in, to get this 600,000 valuation, you need to get planning for that again, or something that's similar exactly. to the side? Yep. What, what's next door, either side? Uh, so next door is just a parking lot, and then okay. the next door to the right is uh, another house. So that's all residential. All the way up the Is street. it like a residential area? It looks That's quite correct. leafy, quite nice area. Yeah. Nice expensive houses. Yeah, you might get diff you know, a bit of pushback from the council on a, on a 10 bed HMO. Mm. Um, th there's probably a better way of doing that, um, which would you know, be maybe two flats and then use C3 to C4 permitted <coughs> development rights to, to get two six bed HMOs because mm -hmm. you'd get the first phase of planning through quite easily as two flats. The council yeah. tick a few boxes. I'm open to that. It's because the main thing you have in Milton Keynes and the issue you, r you run into in planning uh, with HMOs is parking. With this property, as you can see, there's parking all the way got lots of parking. around, yeah, yeah. which is the advantage. You, if the neighbours complain profusely, that that's where your issue might lie Absolutely. politically. Mm. Um, that, you know, is there an Article 4 direction area in Milton Keynes or yeah. specifically this area? Uh, there's an Article 4 across the whole of Milton Keynes. So this is in an Article 4 direction? That's correct, yeah. Right, so, so you can't do the C3 to C4 then, obviously. No. So you would need planning. So this yeah, is very much a, an opportunity if you can get planning. What's your target market for the HMO? So young professionals. Uh, I mean, there's massive demand in Milton Keynes. And you have, part of your portfolio is HMO already? Uh, that's correct. What, how many previously, what number would this be? Fifth HMO. I'm not that interested in HMOs, to be fair, but there might be other angles here, like you said, and I like the fact you brought three different angles to it. If we were just to refurbish the existing building and sell it, what could we sell that for? Probably go for about 550. So I'll cross that one off. Um, and what if we did four flats, does that include an extension or is that just the existing footprint? So in Milton Keynes, quite a few people have done them where you do it almost like a cluster home. Yeah. So you have, the, you know, the four flats yep. you title split it yep. and if you were to just use the extension part to do that the flats go for about 180 yep. you know for but conservatively if we saw a drop or a correction in the market yep, if we budgeted 150 yep, um, yeah 600 the, in the gross would be 600k uh, that's for the flat so with the extension so building on four flats so you got yep. four flats on the extension plus the existing house plus, plus the existing house okay yeah. So if we put, the, and what could we put the existing house into, if it wasn't an HMO, could we put it into another, another two big, two decent sized flats or? Yeah, or a semi. Semi, yeah, I like that. And they've got enough garden for semis either side. So we could get six units out of it, of which two semis and four. So the gross would be, so the semis what, 250 each, something like that? Uh, at least, uh, you'll get about 300,000. Well, they're very close to get, you know, they're gonna be close to all the, average. let's say, two, let's say 250 each just for the sake. So it's 500 plus 600 is 1.1, yeah? I'm not really keen on the HMO angle. Um, it's really the alternative uses that it can be put to. 
So you've got a D1 use here. Um, and you, you've talked about planning. So there's likely to be some very attractive alternatives for converting this to residential without the need for planning permission. It's just that we don't know about those yet. They'll be unfolding by the time this gets on air. Th the problem with this, I think the purchase price is probably a little bit too high. Um, the reason is that the pe permitted development is going to allow you to do a lot with this mm. uh, within the existing envelope. If it was two straight floors and a loft, then you could do have a lot of fun. So, and this is the problem I find with many of these sites. You get these D1 sites, and it it you'd get two floors and a roof for 500 grand, and then you get basically one floor with the next floor in the roof, and they still want 500 grand for it. It's almost too but nice, really, isn't what it? What you can do with it is so limited. I think this is too much money as the purchase price for this type of deal. That's the problem. So if there's any downward scope on that, it, you may be able to make it into a deal, but I think it's just too much. Yeah, I suppose just echoing what some of the guys have already said. The 500, has that been agreed? You said it was turned down at 550. Has he agreed 500? Yeah. Does, does there seem to be flexibility on that? Potentially, if we could you know, go through a bit quicker, but obviously from our point of view, we wouldn't want to yeah, like as Ranjan said. Um, yeah, I think I agree with what Ranjan said so far as the margin just being a little bit tight. If you were buying this, if you were to turn it into two semis, it would be just the two semis. Is there another, prop the existing property on top of that? Well, well that's the option we have to build. Build the, another four build flats. another property. Right, yeah. okay. And what would you have preferred? So you've given kind of various options. What would your preferred option be? Doing the 10 bed HMO and then having the four flats um, refine, because then you've got a bit of diversification as well. So if the HMO market turns, um, or you know the flat flats I think is where the future is going and yet there is such a high demand for young professionals in HMOs so from a cash flow point of view uh, it works out quite well and the refinancing point of view and have you done an HMO in it clearly a very residential area predominantly that's where all my HMOs are it's tantalizingly close to a deal the problem is I don't think it's quite there what is the potential of getting planning permission for the extra four flats I haven't spoken to the planners, but I know, you know, from the people I've, I've spoken to yep. have done, gone through the process, because of the advantage of where we're building, that we're not overlooking anywhere. The thing that we'd have to see is if we built to the, that, the left hand side, that would mean that we're overlooking a parking lot. So it's, you know, from that point of view, I'm pretty confident that okay. we can. Well, the good thing is you've got the parking, because mm. you're going to need one for one, or one and a half for one, or two for whatever it might be. So as long as you've got enough parking spaces there. I mean, I, I actually think, it's a shame because it's almost too nice as it is, mm. and that's why it's still 500 grand. Mm. If it looked a dog, uh, it might be 400, and actually at 400, mm. um, because whatever condition it is, in a way, you're going to have to do it all again anyway to a point. So actually, you know, you're not you're you're not really benefiting from the fact that it's it's nice, and other people might buy it to make it back into a home. For me, it's not quite good enough. It's not that far away. Uh, as long as you know you're going to get the, the, the four flats. But I'm afraid uh, as a deal, I wouldn't want to do the HMO particularly. And as a deal, I'd much rather do the four flats than the two houses. And for me, it's n the, it, you, it's, the price is just a bit too much. So it isn't something I could invest in today. I actually, being possibly the, the most current HMO micro studio yes, person the in the room. I wouldn't say the expert, I, but I would, say, <laughs> I would say you certainly are in the market at the current time. Yeah, thanks, John. Appreciate that. The HMO model is risky on this. I don't, I don't actually see it as an HMO model at all. I, I see the John, the, the John route, which is get a good extension, get three or four semis on the site, make sure the GDV on those stacks up. It's done to a good spec um, and you can make some money selling those on. You know, be cautious. This is a word to, uh, you know, aspiring investors out there. Don't try and turn everything into an HMO. They don't all work. You know, it's, it's hot property at the moment. Um, not Buzz everything's work. suitable. Don't try and turn everything possible into an HMO just because it, it makes a load of cash flow and, and it looks good on paper. Um, potentially, this one is, is too risky for that. So for that reason, I'm out. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully that advice... Um, might help you going forward looking for better sites for HMO conversion. I would love to back you. Um, come back with another project and I'll back you. I think the, one of the biggest things I see with people that do HMOs is, uh, I did it to start with to build up the cash flow. It's when to start doing other things. 
uh, to, to get out of the HMO mindset and see other possibilities in property. And I think you're at that stage where you need to sort of broaden your horizons. Commercial to resi is fantastic. I just don't think there's an, as John said, it's too good. It's not distressed enough. And also, this thing that I say about look for two floors and a roof, mm. then you can do so much. The thing about planning permission, I don't like dealing with planners, it's too much of a pain. If this was two floors and a roof, under permitted development, you could convert it into two houses. And then you convert it into two houses, you split it vertically, then both houses come with PD rights as houses. And then you can implement PD on that. And you don't have to consult these planners. So you can do so much without planning. Why go down that sort of, sort, sort, sort of route? So, but this is just too nice a property to start with, and there's not enough space to do the kind of sexy things that you can do with these sort of units. So find one that has a little bit more meat on the bone and come back. First off, HMOs aren't really my bag anyway, um, but I agree that they are forced sometimes, and I think this as a deal itself seems a little bit forced based on what the other, the other guys have said predominantly. Um, so it's not really for me, based upon that. But great story, and I think you're very investable, so another deal it probably would be for me. You yourself, your story is very compelling. I think you clearly know your area and you clearly have um, expertise in the HMO space, and it does sound also to me that you're ready to take that next step. I do echo that maybe this isn't exactly enough meat on the bones, not quite the right opportunity, um, but do come back again with some, something else. And yeah, no, very interesting to, to understand your, your mindset and how you look at these things. Thank you. To sum it up, it needs to be 400 grand. And if it's 400,000, you can flog it on for 500 and not do anything. But thank you very much for coming to see us. And, and, uh, and we'll be an, there'll be another series and we'd be love to see you again. By the way, John, John's absolutely correct. If we're all saying it's not worth 500, then everyone else is going to say that as well. So keep an eye on that vendor. Wait another two or three months and keep going back to them and saying, is it still for sale? Because no one else is going to buy it at that level. So Dylan, tell us how it went. It went well, got some good feedback, but unfortunately didn't get uh, an investment. Any feedback from the angels? Yeah, just got to get the price a bit lower. Okay. Yeah, so hopefully if I can renegotiate it, leave it a few months, hopefully we can do something with it. Great, so you're going to head back today and reassess your numbers? Absolutely. Demelza, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to have you here with us. Can you tell us a little bit about the deal today and what you're after from our angels? The deal is a period property conversion mm. in um, St Leonard's, which is in East Sussex. Okay. Um, it's a high end, I'm hoping to do a high end refurbishment mm -hmm. and uh, it's a lovely period property that's got lots of original features, high ceilings. Um, I'm planning to install some parquet floor and give it a really high end finish. Uh, how much investment are you after today? I'm looking for a 60-40 split. Okay. And um, yeah, that's it really. Lovely. Well, good luck. Now we've got Demelza coming into Sears. Demelza is an interior designer and a property in investor and developer. I think she's coming to pitch an apartment that needs refurbishing and reselling. What I like about this personally is that I don't have to I don't have to choose the kitchens, the bathroom, all the colours, because there's an expert that will be doing it, and I'm hopeless of picking the colours, especially. Demelza, hello, welcome. Thank you very much for coming. Have you come up to from St Leonard's today, or no? I live down the road in Do Newfield. You? Yeah, oh, even better. <laughs> that's that's great. Well done. Super. Um, tell us a bit about yourself and then a bit about the deal, please. So I'm Demelza. Um, I'm a property developer, investor and um, site sourcer and interior designer. I've been working in property for about 15 years. I started as an agent. Uh, I got the property bug from being an agent. Just been doing mainly residential for the past sort of 12, 15, 12, 15 years because I've had breaks in between. Um, mainly working on sort of I guess what you call vanilla type investments. I did sort of sourcing buy to lets below market value, uh, completing full refurbishments and then sometimes flipping. Uh, I've used a few different strategies. So I've bought things that um, require full refurbishments but have short leases. I love things that have short leases. So do I. And We're um, going to get on well, you and me. Yeah, initially I started with sort of shared houses H um, before HMO legislation came in. 
um, and don't rent them as rooms because I sort of mitigated the risk because um, if one tenant didn't pay, I still had the mm. rental yep. income from the others. Um, I left that, went on to, like I said, short leases, um, s specifically sourcing those um, and then things that often if you find a property that's got short lease, it's usually in a poor state of repair as well. Yep. So I'd had the uplift by re, um, refurbishing and increasing the yep. uh, extended lease. Excellent. So talking about the deal, so um, how did you find it? So and tell us um, all about it. When we went into lockdown, I just sort of obviously thought I'd had this sort of plan at the beginning of the year. Sort of my plan is to sort of complete on three properties. I was sort of hoping to do a bit more commercial stuff, but I was sort of, I've been to Hastings a few years ago and I quite liked the properties because they're quite substantial in size. There's a lot of um, period architecture that's really nice. Some people that I deal with, sort of finance people, they mentioned that they'd had a few clients that were looking in Hastings St. Leonard's again and the area had really sort of taken off. I'd been down there five years ago. So I just took a trip up there and decided to, just, um, to do some viewings. So I did, and I viewed a few, and this property was probably the last one I looked at. And I quite liked it because it was across the road. If you could look on the road there, there's, on that side that we can't see, there's um, quite a nice building that's just been fully refurbished. I liked it because it was large in size. There is a bit of a sea view. It's like a, a glimpse bit. or a glimpse. A glimpse. I can <laughs> tell you and used to be an estate agent. Go on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell me tell us about the deal then. Um, what you're paying for it, what is it worth and what do you want out of us, please? It was on the market for one fifty. It had a short lease. And I managed to negotiate it down to one three five and they extend the lease. Back to its original level. To one two five. Okay. Yes. So in good condition. Um, as an average, those sort of style properties have sort of go for about 210, but in top, you know, high end finish, they're on the market at sort of 320. The ones opposite are professionally converted or new? Professionally converted. Okay, and they've yeah. just all been finished? Yep. So they're coming with, they're coming with a 10 year warranty, they're coming with all the rest of it, all the, all the bells, yeah? Um, I don't know that actually. Okay. How, when I say professionally converted, I'd say they're just other developers, probably a bit more with. But they've done like ten at once or eight at once. The, the whole thing's been done, is it? What is it? Whole building? Yeah. You mean? Yeah. No, they're individual okay, flats. Individual, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Good. Right. Nicholas. Now you um, know where St Leonard's on Sea is. Yeah. And looks you like pronounced nice it right more than you did earlier. Go nice, on. Nice little town. Um, they're on the on the market for sort of up to three twenty. You said. Yeah. Um, are they selling for that? Have you got any comparables of actual sales on um, the land registry? Well, there is, yeah, on the um, page. You did have a, one of the it's pages. slightly confusing because there's, there's a. I know. Helen and I were chatting a moment ago and that there's quite a range of values there, which, you know, we're questioning how you're adding 150 grand's worth of profit by seemingly just, you know, redesigning the interior and, and painting it and redecorating it. You know, not, there's no, from what I can tell, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's no major development work going on. So how are you able to add, so there's two questions, the value, the value, you know, the va comparable, sorry, why are they so different? And secondly, how can you add 150 grand without doing any substantial physical building works or change of use? But I am planning to um, finish it to a high specification. Um, in addition to that, if you can see from the plan that I um, have had sort of redrawn. I'm planning to lose the kitchen and create a third bedroom with an ensuite. So there will be two ensuites and a additional bathroom. So it'll be three bedroom, three baths, which might seem a Sorry, Demelza, just let me jump in there. Sorry. That 210, is that not for three beds though? Well, that's an average and that was based on... Um, I've got it here. So it just says, so it's three beds for the area, the average being 210. That's average condition. Right, yeah, okay. Sorry. The, being the, the average property in the area, is that right? Yeah, yeah for, but three also for the finished product. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it does also say for the average condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fine, okay. yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. if you go further on and you look at the com comparables of what what has actually sold recently, you can see that there's a three bed, um, 8C, the mount, which sold for 347, and that was recently, that was on the 3rd of, this year. So just looking at the ones that you have there, the pictures, 
Mm. Is it fair to say that they are probably the top end of three beds in the area, the 325 and the 350? Um, I would say that they are top end, but there are still some that are even Kay. more, you know. Um, so just one concern that I would have there is, I assume you won't have the freehold in this building. No, it and won't the have the freehold. the outside of the building looks a bit, old, bit warm. Yeah, it is definitely um, scruffy. Whereas they look quite nice. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And, and I did sort of take that into consideration because um, I've spoken to the freeholder and he's quite a nice man. And he is quite happy to, we, you know, have a little bit of a conversation about repainting the outside. On the square footage, you say it's a little bit smaller, but those are 1,033 square foot and 1,066. Mm. And 1,066 is at 315. 315,000, mm. you know, and yours is 800 square foot, which is 20% less s s space. How much is that? It's 300, you know, it's 300 pound a foot, isn't it? Basically? So you're knocking sort of on the top one there, you're knocking 70 grand off that to get to a comparable for your size. And on the cheaper one, you know, you're knocking uh, 63,000 off. So then you're down to 250,000 and 280,000 respectively for the value of your property. So I'm interested how you've got to 320 as your valuation. Is it gold plated walls? <laughs> With all due respect. No, no, it's fine, don't worry. Um, I mean, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm just also, I mean, there was some, the ones that were across the road, they've now been removed and they're not, they're obviously still going through the sales process. Oh, it probably would have been good to get but they were selling at 320 ac directly across the road. So I'm using that as a bit of a benchmark. I mean, if yeah. I can slightly jump in in your defence, it's a hundred it's almost 100% return on capital with the valuation you've given. So it's still a pretty decent return even if it sells at 250. Can I just sort of e extend on Nicholas's sort of line here? Um, I get the, um, you know, bung the kitchen in the lounge and make an extra bedroom strategy for increasing rent. But for sell-on, I think it's a slightly different ball game because when you get into the three-bedroom apartment market, um, a lot of people, a lot of expectations are for a garden. And a lot of the comparables are basement, they're maisonette, so it's, it's probably implied, it's not actually said in the comparables, but if you read between the lines at some of the addresses, they probably do have that outside space. And again, square footage is... I get if you were doing this as a rental strategy, you can make more rent by making an extra bedroom. But without the extra square footage, I, I, I wonder whether the comparables... Because in, in the UK, we have a tendency to say, compare based on number of bedrooms as opposed to square yeah. footage. Yeah. And th that's essentially what you're getting, not number yeah. of bedrooms, if that makes sense. Yeah. In terms of the, the direct comparable that you're talking about are kind of across the road here. So the 320 uh, for 900, pound, uh, 900 square foot, so you've got 355 a square foot there. But if yours is 800, then using that same average, 355, that gives you relatively, a, or 284 I've got it at. Um, so I think a 320 marketing on a 284 price, um, yeah, it gives a bit, of, gives me a bit of doubt there. Have you got the permission for? Will you get the permission for the freeholder to refurbish it as you wish? Because the lease probably says you need the freeholder's permission. So is that yeah. going to be an issue? I, I can't foresee that being an issue. No, he's quite. I think he's quite keen to get it. We need it in writing. Is he the owner of the flat at the moment? No. Yeah, he is the owner. Yeah. He owns the flat as well. He owns the whole building. He owns the freehold, but does he own this flat? No. Yeah, he owns downstairs and he owns upstairs. But and he does the middle. This one. No, he owns the middle as well at the moment until I buy it. So how much is the ground rent? £250 per year. OK, well, under the new rules, ideally, if you're doing a new lease, it should be 0.1% of the, of the value of the property. So if you're paying one tw worth 135 for it, it should be 135 quid. That's, that's what it should be. Well, I'm nearly ready to make you an offer. OK. What sort of deal do you want to do? Tell us, what, what's, the, what's the game? What's the deal? Are you putting any money in yourself? Ideally, I would not like to put I'm any sure money you, in. I'm sure you wouldn't want get No, don't blame you. Yeah, I mean, the whole idea is that I'm trying to sort of grow my business now. I'd like to sort of hit the ground running and sort of make, um, get cracking with this. Yep. And then be looking for the next deal to get onto. So if okay. I could. So I'm going to make you an offer. I'll put all the money up for the deal and I'll give you 25% of the net profit and I think it's probably worth 275. Right. 
and I want you to use all your skill and ability that I haven't got. I'll get all the building work sorted out. I'll pay for everything, okay. but I need you to put your, that input into it. Okay? Um, just a little bit of feedback when presenting to investors. You're better off being conservative with numbers. Okay. Um, because you put together a great pack, which has given us all the evidence, and I think it's going to be, for me anyway, a bit of a turn-off to okay. see the numbers look inflated. Yeah. Um, uh, and that could be a red flag so far as how you operate your business. Not that it mo is, I'm just no, saying. Yes. Thank could you. Be. Great presentation, great pack. Um, I do get there is something in this deal. It's just not the type of deal that I do. I really like you. I really like your story. I love the amount of time money and and belief in yourself and that you're dedicating to educate yourself that's 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 a huge plus for you in my book definitely i love like the detail in this it would be a little bit too much detail for some investors like probably not for us but for some investors who just I'll be mind for john in, in <laughs> well i was going to be kind and not say that but as soon as you've gone there um thanks so just be kind of mindful who you're you're pitching to like i say the numbers kind of bring concern to me. So on this occasion, it's not for me, but I really want to follow your journey and see what you do. So I'd definitely like to stay in touch and, and Jen, I wish you well with everything. I think, yeah, I think you've done uh, you know, great pack. As, as uh, Helen said, it's probably a bit too much information to digest and read through, but lots of information there. Um, when you do comparables, make sure they're, they're real and genuine comparables. So there's a bit of a learning lesson there, I'd suggest in you know, presenting three or four comparables rather than so many, yeah. make sure they're very accurate and, and then compare them on the price per square foot basis as well. I'd love to work with you. I don't think this deal is for me and I think you would work really well with John. So, and I think you've got an incredible, uh, incredible offer from John um, and you couldn't have a more formidable business partner. So I'm gonna step back and declare myself not investing today, but thank you for coming in. Oh, thank you. Thank you everyone. I really appreciate that. Thanks for the advice. And um, yeah, I'll keep the um, presentations a bit simpler in the future. Um, and thank you. Thank you, John, as well. Appreciate it. Are you going to accept his offer? That's oh. the big question. Hey, there's, there's an offer on the, on the table. table there for <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, well, I'll accept then. That's fine. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Great. Thank Great. you very much. Excellent. Well Excellent. Well Excellent. 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 Thank you. So, did we have a deal? We do, we have a deal. Fantastic, congratulations. Thank you. Who went for it in the end? It was John. Okay. And he's offered me a 100% funding and we do a profit share. Okay. So, yeah. So, really you're happy? Positive. Yeah, really happy. Good. Emmanuel, welcome to Property Elevator. It's great having you with us. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about your deal. So I've got a nine unit new build scheme in Purley Croydon. Okay. Uh, just got planning permission just over two weeks ago. Lovely. Uh, and I'm looking for an investment of around about 700,000. Brilliant, okay, well, good luck. Emmanuel is coming to see us. He is a developer and he's looking to fund this new development in Croydon. Shall we get him in and uh, yeah, make, him get the measure of him? I think I recognise you from a TV show. You might Do have I? done. You might have done. I was on a TV show recently. Um, which show was that? It was a Rich House, Poor House. I was the poor house. I don't believe that for one minute. <laughs> uh, tell us a bit about yourself, Emmanuel, and about the deal you brought today for us to fund. I've been a property investor for about 25 years. Yep. Got a quite a large property portfolio and I've been developing different schemes all over London in the main. So the scheme we're talking about today is a scheme we've just got planning permission on a few weeks ago in Purley Croydon. It's a nine unit scheme, 7,163 square feet. It consists of one three bedroom, five two bedroom, three one bedroom apartments. Some figures, please. Sure. So the purchase price is 1.1 million. Yep. The bill costs 1.5 million, 1.45 yep. million. The sill, section 106, is and car club is 100,000. Yep. Contingency, 7% of 100,000. Purchase and exit fees, another 120,000. You've got finance at roughly 200,000. Yep. Total purchase and bill cost and contingency is uh, 3 million and 70. Uh, we're very conservative on the GDV, so I've given you a couple of handouts. There's two schemes literally, literally in the next road. So you've got uh, uh, Russell uh, Hill, which we've got another scheme in planning at the moment. 
which is in the next road and it's selling for a much higher price per square foot. It's selling between 550 and 580. I've based all the figures on 515 okay. per square foot. 515.15. 515. The blended build rate is about 202 pounds a square foot. Profit on cost is 20% at rough at 620,000 is the overall profit. 620. And what are you looking for us t- from us today? Looking for an equity partner. Yep. The total equity required is 800,000. We'll put yep. in 100,000. We're looking for an equity partner or number of for the balance of 700,000 uh, for a 50% profit share. I don't know Croydon quite so well, but you know, to make 600 grand, putting 3 million in GDC to make 600 grand, I can make that by putting seven or 800,000 in, in the Thames Valley, you know, on, a, on an office to resi conversion or something a little bit less. You, you, you very well can. So, so if you bear in mind, like most the, developers, most of these things take 12, 18 months to come to market. So you base your numbers on where the market was at the time. The figures were higher. I've revised them down to where they are now. Sure, okay. And so this is realistic for now? It's realistic for now. But in, when we first did it, the GDV was just under 4 million. Um, one thing I'm always nervous on is when I see steps, yep. external steps, because I always think that signifies extra costs. And if you look here, you've got, you know, it's a beautiful design, don't get me wrong, <clears throat> but you've got, you know, steps up from obviously the garden and, and you're, you're obviously building a, the, the car stacker is, is, is where the steps go up. So is that natural ground falling down or are you having to dig, it, dig anything out? No, that's the natural ground. So you're using the natural undulation to do it? Correct. Did you try and get a, a basement level in this? With the ground, you could obviously have windows at the rear. No, uh, the floor. Uh, we, we haven't done that. We've done a few basements. I don't like them. They take extra time, money. I agree entirely with you. Um, so learn once, don't do the same thing again. I think, it, I think it just depends on the area though, doesn't it? I mean, I know a lot of areas you in London okay where... Mayfair. Yeah, Correct. I mean... I look up at Radlett and uh, you know, the people are going three or four storeys down there because the price of land is so high. What, in Radlett? In Radlett, yeah. Wow. A lot I'm of people of doing those developments there. Mm. So, it, I mean, Croydon is you know, probably not as expensive as there, but I guess it comes down to the numbers, doesn't it? If you're prepared well, to take that extra risk, it probably Rad- doesn't Rad- work. Radlett and Croydon prices aren't a million miles away. Actually, in Radlett, the price per square foot now is about 650 to 675. Um, I know the area pretty well. I live there. Okay. Oh, you live there? Uh-huh. Right, okay. <laughs> so the there clue. you go. So you know of these developments? Uh, I'm I know sure. some of the actual yeah. developments. I know some of the very big builders there yeah. as well. And um, what's, the, what's the time frame on this? It's going to be 12 month build, six month marketing. Uh, but I always say allow 24 months. You definitely never know what the market's going to be. You don't know if another COVID's going to be there or another Brexit. Or There's always something. I agree there's entirely. And selling the last unit's your profit. I suppose my biggest concern would be the profit is less than 10% of the percentage of the GDV. So is that right? 620 profit on 6.4 million GDV? The cost is 3 million and 70. Right. The GDV is 3690. So it's 20% on cost. Right. Okay. All right. Sorry, I misunderstood that. Yeah. And again, I've, I've been very conservative. I could have come in here with inflated figures, but that would be wrong. Yeah. So, it's, you know, when you're doing a development, from all the years of experience, you always undervalue because you just don't know where the market's going to go. If it, it goes to the figures where we think it is, it's just extra profit. If exactly, it doesn't and that, that was my point, is obviously the market's relatively good in Croydon at the moment. It could come down by 10% and that, yeah, fine. Uh, and that I've done sense. a sensitivity analysis of 10% increase in bill costs, 5% down in GDV, and there's still a profit of 300,000, even on those particular figures. Um, so... And again, it's not including the parking or the freehold. So there's a, there's a bit of movement in there at the same time. It's a beautiful scheme. I've seen some of the things you've done in the past. And, you know, I know the, the calibre and the quality that you deliver. So, no, it's, um, yeah, very it's interesting. It's like my jackets. I like things to be a little bit different. <laughs> a little bit of flair. <laughs> like you've, got, you've got all the flair I have not got. But what I have got and what I, what I can bring to the table I think has been a little bit of more realism perhaps to the deal where you know you need in every partner you need a diff- you need to be different so uh, you know you've got the flair and the enthusiasm and, and the experience of doing these um, and, and I can perhaps bring a bit more hard-nosed uh, hard-nosed size to it, side to it as it were so I quite like that. I wanted to explore a little bit about the um, the build costs. Yep. Um, 
uh, we've got this sort of timber frame and all of, all that sort of stuff, but what about the groundworks? Because it, it does seem a sloping site and all of that. Has that all been... So, again, we should have a firm design and build price in the next seven to ten days. Okay. Uh, and the indication, including the um, timber frame, is 1.45 million. And I'm hoping to shave a little bit off of that, but that's where it's looked to be. Plus the contingency of another 100,000, which we'll probably use. Uh, it takes you up to 1.55 million. I've put extra cost on the finance of 200,000. It won't be as much as 200,000. So there's this movement in there to allow uh, for it. So, any, you know, so the, the bill cost is, is, is plenty, plenty there. It's not really for me. Um, I think for me personally, it's too much cash in for not enough return. I'm not saying that's not a, it's not a good deal because it's probably more yeah. for one of you guys than it is yeah. for me. So I'll withdraw first. I'm going to go quickly after, uh, purely on the basis of the numbers, and I don't think I can add any value. I think you know, you know exactly what you're doing. I like to go into deals where I can, can add the value, and that's the, the passion I have in property is, like you as a developer, I want to go in and create something and create that value, and I get a buzz out of that. Um, so I don't think I could get excited about the, the business aspect of it because you've already nailed that and you've nailed the design. So, um, yeah, unfortunately I won't be investing on this occasion, but it's a great site and I'm sure it'll be amazing. Thank you. See, this is right at my strata. Someone who knows what they're doing, some who's, who, someone who's got a proven track record, somebody whose numbers are sensible. My concern on it is the return on investment numbers in terms of the time frame. So the return on investment in terms of the 620 that we're looking at is 44% over two years. Well, it's actually 18 months, but I've said two years because yes. I like to be oh, conservative. You're right, you're right, yeah, 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 you're yeah. right Manuel, yeah. you're right. No, Absolutely I like that, and I like, the, I like the exactly you're yeah. conservative with that. That gives me much more kind of reassurance. Um, so I guess my concern is, is more kind of the, the environment and the economic environment that we're in at the moment if we look at kind of the downside with and i love that you've done the sensitivity analysis you're the first person that's been in here who's even mentioned that word other than those words other than me so i absolutely love that so but so, so let me help you on a couple of bits at the moment as well sure so all the schemes that we build are in help to buy or help to sell should i say <laughs> in terms of the marketplace so that's the fir first thing so the amount of deposit somebody needs to put in is quite small Secondly, because of COVID, we are now in uncharted territories where interest rates are as low as they're ever, well, ever going to be. I think this is a pretty good scheme. And Croydon, I don't know if you've seen some of the stuff, but it's the most searched after area to buy in the UK currently. Who's, who's going to show their hand first? That might be I mean, yourself and Helen. Yeah, Ranjan's oh, very I don't, quiet. I don't, I don't think Ranjan's in. I don't know, Ranjan, let's hear, let's hear what you think. I, I, I think I'm uh, kind of uh, torn here um, because I'd love to work with you um, and there are just a couple of things holding me back. One is that um, I'm not a new build type of person, so what I can add to the party, I'm not entirely sure. I've done a lot of property stuff, but I haven't done that much new build. Uh, it's mainly converting old stuff. The, the other thing that holds me back is the um, length of time that much money would have to be tied up it's into. It's not very long, Ranjan. Uh, it's like 18 months, a couple of years. What do you expect on a scheme like that? I haven't finished my offer yet. I haven't <laughs> finished my, what I'm saying yet. You haven't finished your offer? Oh, interesting. Ooh. Oh, did I say oh. that? Oh, I think <laughs> you said offer. Uh, if someone wanted to um, come in, uh, I would be willing to put up half of the money if the total profit share was, say, 60%, because I think we'd be putting in quite a lot. So if someone else wanted to come in and offer the other half, I'd be delighted to work with you on this project. I love the idea I've got nothing to do with it, to be honest with you, because I'm up here with property and I've got too much to sell at the moment, probably than anything else. So, um, the fact that you know what you're doing and you're getting on with it and I just need to turn up once a month for a cup of coffee with you and say, how's it going? You go, yeah, it's great. Schedule, schedule's going fine. I actually like that. I'm not a control freak. Um, I'm a delegator and that's how I've made my money, to be honest with you, most of the time by delegating to people better than me. And you're certainly much better than me at something like this. I obviously know, know you and, and know of you and I, like, and I like what other people have said about you as well. For me, my, the problem with it is, it is in it is that the profit really, for me, isn't enough. And I'm not normally a greedy person. 
So you want you need me to put up seven hundred grand, yeah? I do. If you don't get investment today, do you have a alternative way of financing this site? I do. And what is that? Can you My share own that? Money. Your own money. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And why don't you want to do that now? Why? Because cash is king and it gives me the ability to buy other stock, but also more importantly, if there's any shortfalls that the project needs propping up, yeah. that comes from me. So having cash and reserves is important for any investor or developer. I agree. I agree. I would be prepared to put up the 700k, but I would want 70% of the deal. What I'm looking at is, and I always look at kind of worst case scenario for me. So, you know, like I say, I've, I've got my concerns about what's going to happen in the economy. And once we've got kind of supply side shocks and everything hitting the economy and the effect that that's going to be having on prices, particularly over the next, well, certainly kicking in from next year. So as an investor, you expect to get a certain return on your money. Yeah. So provided that return is given to you as the minimum, then if it exceeds that, so you take that as the first payment. I don't know that you're going to want to hit my hurdle rate. Which is? I'm really looking at 30%. Okay. Then you're right, we wouldn't hit that hurdle rate. I don't think a man who wants to do it with me, I think he likes you. <laughs> I, think th I think the cost of the opportunity is a bit too rich and it wouldn't certainly allow me to do another episode of the other program. <laughs> 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 You'd be on the poorhouse side. <laughs> I often say this, if you're not sure, you shouldn't invest. I'm afraid that's where I am. And that's the right decision. Yeah. And seeing as you're on your own, I'm out. Thank you. So Emmanuel, a very interesting turn of events there. It went really well. It was really nice pitching to my peers, different people from different per perspective in property yep. investors, yep. Uh, as well as property developers, mm -hmm. uh, and just getting their perspective and how they view a deal from another property professional. So yeah, it was. It went. I thought it went really well. Good, good. So what's your plan now with the property? Uh, still going to uh, develop it and build it. Uh, yep. We either use our funds or we have access to um, other potential investors, high net worth clients. I really wanted one of the angels, especially Helen or Ranjang. Uh, I've been following them for quite some time, so it would be nice to have worked with them. Yeah, OK, great. Well, best of luck with it and keep in touch and let us know how it goes. I will. Thanks. Thank you. Pleasure. Wow, another great day of deals and a lot of very happy angels and property developers. As always, not all the deals could be taken over the line today, but we hope that those who didn't make it have gone away with some great feedback and hopefully that little bit more confidence to make that next deal work. I'm Elizabeth Warburton and you've been watching Property Elevator.